Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and in this video I'm going to be doing a quick review of The Walking Dead Typhoon. As I said at the start of the video, this video will contain spoilers for The Walking Dead Typhoon and the comic book series but I'm going to keep the first half of this video spoiler free so people that haven't read the novel or the comics yet can get an idea of what this book's about. So anyway, uh, The Walking Dead Typhoon was announced sometime last year and it was hyped up as a story of The Walking Dead that took place out of America. This is the second Walking Dead story to take place outside of America, the first being The Walking Dead The Alien which was released back in 2016. The author of this book is Wesley Chu and my overall thoughts on Typhoon, I thought it was fantastic. I absolutely loved this book. I'll give you a brief, like, idea of what the plot is about. So, there's basically, like, four main characters in this book. You have Winzu, or just Zu, who is basically the protagonist of this story. We also have Elena Anderson, who is an American who came to China to basically teach people English and got stuck here because of the apocalypse. Then we also have Bo, who is like the best friend of Zoo and Elena. Now also, Zoo and Elena are dating, so they are. She stayed behind in China to be with Zoo. Which ultimately led to um, her being stuck here. And then the last character is Henjin. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, he is kind of like their military leader. So, there's that. <laughs> anyway, so those are the four characters. And you have... Basically, China is, has a huge population, right? And in a world where most of that population is made up of walkers, obviously you're going to see a lot of walkers in a place like China. Now, they call the walkers Jiangxi. Now, if you're wondering what all these words mean, towards the end of the book in the back, like in the last few pages, uh... There is meanings for a lot of these words so people can understand them. So yeah, they call the walkers Jiangxi or something like that. Um, don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. But the story is, there is this community. And it has many people in it. And it's kind of like China is doing pretty well for itself. Where... They still have society. Society is kind of stabilized in there. They have a point system. They have people that go out scavenging to earn points. And one of those scavenging groups is uh, Zhu, Elena, and Bo. And basically, oh, the biggest typhoon of Jiangxi are heading right for the community. And the main thing is this community has to find out what are they going to do. Now at the same time, early on in the story, Zoo runs into people from his old village and he wants to keep them safe because the community, sh like, uh, he doesn't want the community he's a part of to find out about this group because this group wants to go off to another place where they will be safe because of the rising water in that area and so that's basically like what the story is about Zhu has his secret and they're also trying to figure out what to do about the Jiangxi they can't just up and leave the beacon which is what they call it and so you may be thinking to yourself, wow, this sounds a lot like No Way Out from the Walking Dead comic book series. A story where walkers attack a community and the characters have to survive the horde. I will tell you this right now without spoilers. 
it goes in a lot of different directions than No Way Out from The Walking Dead. This story goes in a lot of new ideas, new directions. It has a lot of new ideas. The story in this is really interesting and getting to see China in this world is just really interesting. And there is even a few references to other Walking Dead characters. Now, Elena is from Texas, which of course is the location Abraham and Eugene are from. And there's even a line Elena says in the book, Don't Mess With Texas, which is also something said by Eugene in the TV show. Now, this is canon to the comic universe, so yeah. Uh, There's also a moment where a character says that if a character is talking to another character basically saying if you die I'm not going to kill you I'm going to basically keep you as a pet which sounds exactly like what Michonne did and what the governor did and there's even early on in the book when they see two Jiangxi they're wondering how those two Jiangxi could be related could they be you know one idea they say is what if they were two strangers that found each other after the apocalypse which could be a reference to lee and clementine in the game because as we know lee met clementine after the apocalypse began it could just be a coincidence though but there are little uh references now this book will go into dark places but it also keeps that walking dead feel here you may be thinking Because this is a new story with new characters, there's no characters from the comic or the game appearing in this. Do you still have that familiar Walking Dead feel? This fits right at home with the Walking Dead, so it does. The same basic rules apply. The guts trick works, amputation works, the way it does in the comic. All that works. And, yeah. Now this book is so good I read it within a couple days like I I got this book done fast Uh, I just loved it so much I loved seeing where it went it was shocking in a lot of moments and there is some really dark and disgusting moments in this book and I was really really loving where this book was going i just thought like this book was unpredictable it went in some crazy places and if wesley chu wants to do more with the walking dead franchise i will definitely see what he has to do because i love this book if he wants to do another book about a different country or something like that i just really cannot wait to see what they have to show for the walking dead coming up because typhoon is the first walking dead story that takes place in the comic universe we've gotten since the comic ended a few months ago so i am kind of wondering you know will this eventually connect in some way to anything else it might it might not anyway i basically said my thoughts on it without spoilers so now we're moving into the spoiler part so i'll give you a few seconds to go all right everyone ready if you stay here now this is where spoilers happen so one moment in this book that really stuck out as very dark is at some point in the comic, in the uh, novel, when the leader of the beacon gets really desperate for trying to keep the Jiangxi out, they basically want to pick up random survivors that are just living out on their own. They're trying to find basically anyone they can in China, kidnap them, and then make them work, basically as slaves. So. In one chapter, Zoo, and you can see how this ties into Zoo with the village. So obviously a village filled with people is going to be something the Beacon really is interested in. And 
in one chapter, Zoo, a female, and uh, a few other like soldiers go on to this boat looking for survivors. And Zoo, in one area, finds basically a body without a head, and I think he finds another body without an arm. And he realizes, oh, this is a cannibal camp. And so the woman runs up to him and basically says, you gotta see this, Sue. And he says, oh, I already know, it's cannibals. And she says, no, it's not that. We already have the cannibals rounded up. You gotta see this. So he goes into this room and there's a bunch of kids between the ages of 8 and 15. And they are the children of the cannibals. And so a big decision is what are we going to do with these kids because could we bring them back to the beacon? I mean, is anyone going to be ar- want to be around these kids? I mean, they were cannibals. So one guy says we should kill them, put them down, kindest thing we can do. Zoo and the woman are basically saying, no, we're not killing them. We're not killing kids. So the woman goes up to one of the kids and says, we're going to take you back to the beacon. And the child lunges at her and bites out her throat. And so they basically have no choice and they have to execute all the children. That moment was so fucking dark. It was unbelievable. I I didn't expect this book to go in dark places like that. And... There are a lot of dark moments in this book. This book is very ballsy with the characters it kills off. Like, really no one in this novel is safe. And it goes in places you're not really expecting. I don't want to give away the ending. But I would like to... I hope, like in the comic books... This country eventually gets to a place like America does in the future. Where civilization is pretty much back. So hopefully the surviving characters of this book will find that piece. Characters like Carl has found in the comic book. Anyway, that is my uh, thoughts on The Walking Dead Typhoon. An absolutely amazing novel and one I highly recommend. Go out, buy this book if you want because... I'm sure the more love and attention this book gets, the more chances there are for future books, comics, games, and stuff in the Walking Dead universe. So, thank you guys for watching this video. Peace out and goodbye. Just a quick thing I want to add. The Walking Dead... (laughs) The Walking Dead Typhoon was released by Skybound Books. Skybound Books previously released the quotable Negan. So... In case you want to look up more Walking Dead books, there you go.